my son. What will he be when he grows up? Oh, save him from the khaki men and the men in grey, from the dinner on Sunday and snooze men. Let him get a profession, but save him from the snake-eyed men, the hard secret rulers in the unnoticed building without a nameplate. And yet, barrister or businessman, it is all the same. Taught to think he will be appalled at the awful, burdensome boredom of it all, where sunset and entrancing sea sing only of lost islands where men become beasts and one has to turn back and there is no edge to the earth. And yet I would not have him different. Let him sail on the great tides of illusion and the wine-dark sea and come back half bald and a little grey, but singing with a deeper-throated defiance, knowing the swaying rivers under the sea. Sonnet do you remember what we said that day? How high our spirits walked and what a glow was left behind? What was it that was said? And when we meet again, will it be so? Perhaps it does not matter what was talked. Just you and I were standing face to face, or rather heart to heart and mind to mind. The being together was the nameless grace. And if you say white's black or black is red, let it be so between us, for love leans on inconsistency, clings bone to bone in stubbornness, and says not what it means. For anything you do, I love you more, and push to follow even through death's door. Dinner Party the wooden clothes tree with many branching hands was full of hats and coats and conversation. Through oven doors, from inside cooking pans, food for a Friday night of celebration. A dinner fit for kings and queens, all our grandchildren, two to slick sixteens. And as we sat and lingered over dining and talked and laughed, the children's faces shining, a wonder lay behind those laughing eyes. Memories cooking like crusty golden pies. Age Age brings its own especial pain. We feel the slowing of the train, the unfamiliar expectation of being put off at the next station with all our longings still unpacked and left upon the luggage rack. Or on one oddly troubled night, a lovely, long-forgotten sight comes like an uninvited thing, puts out its hands and starts to wring an old man's heart. Coming home. I'm home, I said, and hung my hat beside the door, then washed my hands and sat in my familiar place. You're late. You must be tired. Your supper's ready. So I ate a form of apple filled with golden light, herbs fresh cut from fields of luscious green, a draught of aromatic juices nibbled at spices I had never smelt or seen. I leaned back in my chair, was satisfied, and sighed. And then I heard them say that I had died. <laughs> 